Hello everyone, Shalom. My name is Inez and you're very welcome here to hear the word of the Lord. You're going to go from glory to glory as you listen to this and your faith is going to rise. And it's very important in these last days that your faith is rising, that you're strong in the Lord and you will not be shaken no matter what. Fully surrendered, eyes focused on Jesus. This is a deep message that you're going to hear today and it's something important. And if it doesn't sit well with you if you haven't gone through this yet well then you should think am I really following Jesus have you really looked at the life of Jesus and also what he requires of us because we know that God is good and he's loving and he's gracious and all of these things but he also requires us to fully surrender and to do what he says so let's pray first so Father in Jesus name Lord I just thank you for each and every person who was here to listen to this message. Holy Spirit may you touch their heart. May you speak to them God in Jesus Christ's name and we thank you for your glory. We thank you for your mercy and your grace and your love and your faithfulness Lord and that you never leave us. You never forsake us no matter what in Jesus Christ's name. Holy Spirit have your way. Amen and amen. So this is a very deep message. This is a message for these end times. These last days, you need to be strong in the Lord. These last days, you need to know who you are and you will not be shaken. No matter what anybody does around you to try and move you or shake you, you will not be shaken. You'll stand even if you're by yourself. You know, so even that's something I'm going to speak about now. About when you fully give yourself to the Lord, the Lord will sometimes, most times, bring you to the wilderness and he'll do that deep work within you and he'll call you to himself and he'll begin to minister to you and show you things and show you who you are and do that work within you and Holy Spirit will begin to teach you because he's the best teacher. So when you fully surrender to the Lord, things will change in your life. You won't go to certain places, you won't do certain things, you won't speak a certain way, you won't act a certain way. Your life will just change. Now I just want to ask you, has your life changed since you came to the Lord? You see, just that grace that God gives us, you know, that you just know, that known by Holy Spirit as well, shouldn't be doing this, this is not right. You'll be led by the Spirit of God and you'll just know. And then you're reading the Word of God. And you'll just know because Holy Spirit will be taken over and he'll begin to show you who you are and you'll begin to come more like Christ. So Christ in you, the hope of glory. But this is what I'm getting at. OK. In these last days, many times people will have a bit of Jesus and have a bit of the world. They haven't fully surrendered. And that's why there's constantly problems all of the time. And they don't understand that. So that is why it's very important that you do come away and surrender. Take up your cross. Let Holy Spirit begin to do that work in you. So that Christ can live through you. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. If you know spiritual things, you will understand what I'm talking about. It doesn't mean you live there by yourself and that's it. And you never have fun. Your life is terrible all the time. You know, God is with you. He'll show you his miracles. He'll show you his wonders. He'll bless you mightily. He'll take care of you because he's your father. And he'll show you what he's like as a father and as a Lord and as a judge and as a friend. And I can go on and as a provider, all of these things. OK, so most times what will happen is you lose people in your life. Has anyone here lost anyone? Has anyone here gone through things, hard times, betrayal, hurts? Maybe you messed up, maybe you hurt someone and I can go on. So the whole point today is about letting go as well of people who've hurt you and wronged you in your life. Whether it's your family, whether it's your friends, whether it was your pastor, whether it was someone from your past, whatever it was. So a spirit of rejection and letting go of that, as they say, the daddy issues. But here's the thing. When you come to Christ, you know, some people won't like you. Maybe your boss just won't like you for no reason. A friend won't like you and try to store things up. 
Family members will probably laugh at you and not invite you to certain things. People will just not include you in things. People will laugh at you, mock you because you're reading the Bible. And I can go on. You will experience these things when you come to the Lord. You will experience these things. You know, at the start, I used to cry about this because I was this addicted person trying to kill myself in a really dark place, just really, really bad place. OK. And I didn't know who I was. I was lost, completely broken, hurt, lost and all of these things. So when I came to Christ, when I the Holy Spirit just blew my mind, began to understand the word of God. Love the word. People began to see a change in me. So the drinking stopped, the smoking, the clubs, all of this stuff stopped. People didn't understand. Family thought I was religious nut, weirdo. People laughed at me. People would just walk by and laugh. But then I got offended. And then I got hurt. And then I didn't understand why. And even though you're reading it in the word, you're experiencing all this and people pushing you out. And you're the weird one. You're the odd one out. Okay. And sometimes it'll be for a while and God will bring you to the wilderness and he'll begin to show you him as father. And he begins to heal you of these things. And it's all about identity. And I can go in deeper with that. But you need to know that you will lose people and people will hurt you in life. People will betray you. People will twist things on you. People will gang up on you. People will just drop you and walk away. People will slander. They'll make things up about you. They'll try to hurt you. And these are all attacks of the enemy. But in reality, you will lose some people. And I lost all my friends, which were not friends. They were drinking buddies, party buddies. You could have 15 people over 10 people and boom, a Bible appears. Everyone's gone. Gone. So this is something that you need to know. And this is something that you need to understand will happen. So we remember Jesus knew exactly who he was. And when he was preaching one time, somebody came and said to him, your family's outside. And he said, who's my family? My mother, my brothers, my sisters, except those who hear and obey the word of God. Jesus didn't mind when they were all following him, all these disciples. And some said, oh, no, we don't understand this here. We're going to leave. I'm, I'm not up for this. Right. Goodbye. And half of them left him. And he went, well, let's move on to the next town. Next. And he moved on. Come follow me. Oh, I have to get married. Oh, I have to do this. Oh, I have to look after my father. No problem. I'll move on to the next one. Jesus was very comfortable in himself because he knew who he was. So it's important as Christians that we know in these last days that you know who you are. Because we're going to go through hard times. We're going to go through betrayals, hurts, people laughing at us, people hurting us, people trying to hurt us in different types of ways. You know, unexpected things like King David and Jonathan, you know, or Saul and David, you know, it's, you're, go you're going to get hurt. It's as simple as that. So you have to understand. But the one thing is, everyone can leave you. Everyone can hurt you. But God never leaves you and he never forsakes you. So I've experienced all that. Where the family thinks you're weird. You don't get invited to things. It's just, yeah, that person's there. You feel all that. You lose friends. You feel that. People don't want to be around you. You know, but there's also a spirit of rejection where you have to get that cast off. And then you have to understand who you are in Christ. So then when you are by yourself, you don't feel alone. You're just thinking, I know who I am in Christ. So they can try and do anything they want. It's not going to affect me. You just walk away and stay away from certain people. Praise the Lord. So here's what God says to you. In Psalm 27, verse 10 says, 
when my father and my mother forsake me, then the Lord will take me up. You know, he adopts you. Do you understand that? He adopts you into his family, into the kingdom of God. So a lot of people today, what the devil has done is completely destroyed families. People are not talking. Loads of fathers are not there. So the children are grown up. They don't know who they are. And most families can be a mess because of what the enemy has done. And children are going off on drugs and doing all of these things, you know. Um, people are crying out then. People are hurt. People are rejected. They don't know who they are. Maybe people are adopted. Maybe you've been hurt by spiritual parents even. Maybe your own parents have, have dropped you and pushed you away. Maybe they've passed on. You know, many people are going through different things. But we need to let Holy Spirit fill that void. And that pain and that hurt. You can't carry that. Because you need to know who you are in Christ. This is something... It took me a long time because I didn't have a father around. And different things in my family were taking place, which really, really hurt. But you see, God fills that fire and he fills the hurt and the pain and the emptiness. So he completes you. So everything else is just there. It doesn't hurt anymore. You just go, OK, no problem. So the Lord also says in verse 8, seek my face, seek my face, your face, Lord, I will seek. You come to him, you learn of him. Jesus says, learn of me, give me your worry, give me your care. I'll take the pain, don't carry it on your back. So we all go through these things at times where there's so much from the enemy, there's so much pressure in life that you're carrying it. So you need to give it to him. You need to let it go because it becomes a burden then. So we're not here to people please, which is what some people can do. And they begin to look for that love of the mother and father from people. From your pastors, from your boyfriend, your girlfriend, from other people. Look at me. And they do it in a wrong way. So that's why you need to know identity. That's why you need to know who you are. You're fearfully and wonderfully made. You're a child of the Most High God. And Deuteronomy 14 and 2 says, For you're a holy people to the Lord your God. And the Lord has chosen you to be a peculiar people to himself above all nations upon the earth. He loves you deeply, very much. And he shows you that in life. When God began to show me as a father. When I was by myself for a long time, I was rejected, I was pushed out, nobody wanted to talk to me, people didn't want to know me, and that hurt. But God filled me. He began to show me wonders, He began to show me miracles, He began to provide for me, He began to share with me with love, and you think, wow. And then when I had a prophetic word, the first ever prophetic word was when. An Australian lady said to me, the Lord says daughter. And when I heard that daughter, that just, she was saying all other things, prophesying about my future. But that one thing blew my mind. That God thinks of me as his daughter. That I belong to him and he loves me. Isn't that lovely? I thought that was just amazing. And then he began to show me that. So then when people do hurt you, and they come against you or they reject you. You think, yeah, but God loves me. I don't need that. I don't need people. I don't need people to say things to me. It's nice. But now I know who I am. So leave them do that. Pray for them and let God deal with them. So in Isaiah 49, 15. Can a mother forget the baby at her breast? And have no compassion on a child that she has given born to. Though she may forget you. I will never forget you God says. So your parents can walk away. They can leave. Some probably don't care. Some probably dealing with their own stuff. And they can't even take care of themselves. Never mind their child. That can be hurtful. That's why everyone gets hurt. 
But this is why you need to know who you are. It's very important. So yes, people forget us. Some people probably won't say thanks. You probably won't get invited to things. Your name probably won't come up. You know, all these little things, you need to deal with these little small things. In Luke 14, 26, if any man comes to me and hates not his father, mother, wife, children, brother, sisters, yet his own life, also he cannot be my disciple. That's Jesus. That's Jesus. It's just like when God said to Abraham, drop everything and go. But I'm with you. Just go. And he went. So when God tells you to do something, just do it. You mightn't understand at the time, but it makes sense. And he begins to show you who he is. So sometimes, most times, when you fully surrender, he'll take you away from people. Because they won't understand, you see. They look at you and they'll think, what's going on? Just like I said, what happened to me? And people just cut me off here and there. And I'm like, oh God, why is this happening? You know, there's a scripture there. I don't have it there. Where, um, I think it's in Isaiah, where it says, and it pleased the Lord to bruise him. When Jesus was on the cross, going through all the stuff that he went through. It pleased the Lord to bruise him, to die to ourself. We need to die to all that stuff. Rejection, offence, hurt, pain, people coming at us, people trying to do stuff on us. Being by yourself, one of the biggest things, loneliness. When you know who you are in Christ, you understand in Matthew 10 and 22, and you shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. You'll be called names. You'll be laughed at. You'll be pushed out. You won't be invited to lunch. Um, they'll forget you. I could go on. Okay. But you'll be hated. People will laugh. You'll be hated for my name's sake. But he who endures to the end shall be saved. Just keep going and know that your strength comes from Jesus. When you get on your knees in the morning. Lord I need you today. I need you when I'm going to work. I need you when I'm going to this family member. I need you Lord. I'm going through this trial. Help me. Romans 15 and 7. Receive ye one another as Christ also received us to the glory of God. You're received, like I said, you're adopted into the kingdom of God. You belong to the Lord. He loves you so much that I can't even tell you. He loves you that much. And then this one, Matthew 10 and 34. Think not that I'm come to send peace on earth. I came not to send peace, but a sword. You know, there's people today, many people of different religions, cultures, and they get saved. Do you honestly think that most of their family members will be like, oh, this is wonderful, well done, brilliant, oh yes, we accept you. There's going to be fighting, there's going to be what's going on here. All of a sudden someone's out there, they're clubbing, they're doing all these things, they're selling drugs, they give their life to the Lord, their life begins to change. They begin to come away, well, if they begin to fully follow the Lord and come away from things, there's going to be problems. People will think, what are you doing? Why are you going to church? Are you serious? Why are you you're reading a Bible now? Are you joking me? Because light and darkness don't mix. I know that's a deep mes message, but you need to hear it. Because if you haven't experienced anything like that, well then, there's something wrong. If you're still the same way and you haven't changed, there's something wrong. But this is the way it is. But you see, God is with you even till the end. 
and he heals you. He restores you. He fills that void, that pain, hurts when you give it to him. Because you're going to go through some things in this life. So especially in these last days when we need to be praying for other people because there's lots of people who don't know Jesus. They don't know him. So it's like when a Christian starts dating a non-believer. You're not going to get on because if you're really a Christian, there's going to be problems there. So you need to understand who you are in Christ. So we're coming into even darker times in this world. Darker times. What if there's more lockdowns? Just saying. What if things happen if there's war? If something happens. How are you going to be? How are you going to deal with this? That might sound very tough. But by yourself or with your family. Are you strong enough in the Lord? What if your pastor hurt you? What if someone left you? What are you going to do? Are you going to cry under the duvet? Why God? Why God? Or you pray for people. You pray for your nation. You're praying for your leaders. You're praying for the people in the government. You're praying for the young children who are on drugs. Hanging out on the streets. You're praying for your family. The ones who are laughing at you. The ones who reject you and forget you. Are you praying for them? As much as you don't want to do certain things, you, you do by the grace of God because the love of God is shed abroad in your heart and you're there for people because there's love inside of you. So we need to be praying for those who don't know the Lord. I know that was a tough message, but this is something that you experience as a real genuine Christian when you've really laid it all down and if you haven't laid it all down lay it down because when the times get tough you won't know what to do that's where that scripture says when you're walking with Jesus and all of a sudden tribulation things happen and they break they crash down because they're not building on the rock they don't know who they are they're in and out. They're all over the place. They're with Jesus. They're in the world. They're going clubbing. They're back in church. They're sleeping around. They're back in church. It's a bit of a harsh message, you know, but um, we need to hear these things. It's best to lay it down. So when you go through that fiery trial, you're standing. You are standing. Because God is with you. And God is your strength. And he is your father. He is your mother. He is your doctor, he's your healer, he's your provider, he's your friend, he's your comforter, he's your Lord. He loves you so very much. So let him do that work inside of you. Be strong in the Lord. Be that rebel. Be the one that stands up and says, I'm a Christian, I'm going to stand up for these things and I don't care what you say. Even if I have to sit by myself because Jesus is with me. And let them laugh. Let them talk about you. Let them try to do things. You know, and then when you pray for them, God will minister to them. And he'll show them. Praise the Lord. So understand who you are. When they all reject you, forget you, push you out, you'll get the church hurts, all of this stuff. We need to get over this and move on. Praise the Lord. Because God loves you. But he does bring you to great people he brings you around kings he exalts you he does wonderful things for you okay i know that was a harsh message but we need to hear these things that is truth that is bible truth and what jesus says in these last days so that is what god is saying to you is to rise up in him knowing who you are and know that he is your strength praise the lord so let's just pray so, Father, in Jesus' name, Lord, we just thank you for this message, Lord. We thank you, Lord, when the world rejects us, hates us, Lord. They hated you first, Jesus. And we thank you that you're the one that's walking beside us. And even those who are by themselves in the wilderness at this time, God, I pray for their peace and their comfort, Lord, that you wipe away their tears, that you heal their pain, that they give you your pain, that they give you all their burdens and their cares, even their family, Lord. 
that you're praying um, that they're praying for their family Lord for salvation in their family Lord and everyone that's hurt them Lord that they forgive them that they forgive Lord and let go in Jesus name but also that they spend this time surrendering to you getting to know you getting to know your word and praying for nations praying for families praying for the lost that they're not wasting time all about poor me myself and I that in these last days we drop this talk Lord and become mighty warriors in the kingdom of God in Jesus name and I speak peace to their mind peace to their bodies peace to their heart and their household in Jesus Christ's name and protection over those Lord who are saved Lord and they're afraid I just pray protection over them God in Jesus name they're blessed as they come in and as they go out in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ you are blessed so go and stand strong in the Lord he is with you in Jesus Christ's name Praise the Lord, you mighty warrior. Keep going.